Anybody that knows me knows I like to move around. <laughs> thank you, Wallace. And thank you to the Santa Cruz community. It's been 26 years now that I've been in Santa Cruz from Los Angeles. And yeah, it's weird. <laughs> it's weird. Um, and there's something that's really special here. And it is my honor and it is my privilege to be a member of this community and to have served it for so many years. Um, I thank you, Wallace, for your vision of calling today and for all of us who are here, my band, my choir, the other people who have spoken, Masia, for coming down from Sacramento. My guy. Like you want to say my baby. <laughs> you done us proud. You done us proud. Um, and yes, we are celebrating 20 years. Um, there's so many things that are happening and this event was planned so long ago, uh, way before we knew that <laughs> we needed to march again. Um, and we're just gonna keep it rocking. How many of you know Linda Tillery? Okay, well, well, Linda's coming to Santa Cruz to help celebrate on February the 25th. And she's doing a very, very special concert with her Freedom Band. And it is about songs of protest and resistance. Yes, at, at Interlight on February uh, the 25th. And we have a gospel concert coming up on April 15th as well. But I'd like to just mention something that Masia said about hope. And how I think at this moment that really is the essence of what we need to remember, hope. And those four letters encapsulate it all, H-O-P-E. H-O, keep your heart open. P, perceive possibilities, and E is engagement, stay engaged. If you can keep your heart open, keep seeing possibility, and staying engaged, you'll keep your hope. If you can keep your heart open, see some possibilities, and stay engaged, you'll develop some hope, even if you don't already have it. And I would like to remind us of a couple of things. Take a deep breath. Take another breath. To a certain extent, those of us who have been calling for global change and transformation have prayed this moment in. No, this isn't necessarily what we thought it was going to look like, but I tell you this, you can't heal what you don't feel. You can't heal what you don't feel. We have been in a hypnotic trance. We have had some kind of amnesia that's going on. When I say that to a certain extent, we've, we've ushered in this moment that anything unlike where you're trying to go has to come up to be healed, okay? So if you're trying to get sober, guess what? You got to take a look at all the stuff that's made you addicted. If you want to be unconditionally loving, it means you are going to become intimately con intimately familiar with the conditions that you put on loving. That's what you're going to be doing. We can't get to where we have to go without this. And I think that we have forgotten, we have just forgotten how social change works. It is a pendulum swing. You can't have something as dramatic as Barack Obama and not have it followed by a tea party. There's a way in which we have begun to think that life is linear, but it's not. It never is. It never is. When I look at the work we did in the women's movement, when I look at the work we did in the black movement, when I look at the work that we did in the LGBT movement, there was always the preparation for the backlash. That's the way it works. <laughs> That's the way it works. And to a certain extent, as extreme as it is now, is a compliment. <laughs> the fact that so many people think they need to take it back means they think we've already won. Yeah. 
Really listen to what I'm saying. The fact that we're here is not just regression, it is the sign of progress. It's the sign of progress. Now is not the time to get mealy mouths. Grieve, yes. Everybody has to do whatever it is that they have to do. But this is the long haul. You used to say the revolution will not be televised and bring your lunch. <laughs> bring your lunch. Because you can't pay attention to, is it swinging here? Is it swinging there? Swinging there? There's a middle that's there. And I want to encourage you to live the values that you say if we are as divisive as the people that we are complaining about being divisive, that's just more divisiveness. If we're separating from the people who are separating, that's just more separation. Because as afraid as we are now, that's how they were eight years ago. The nation ran out of bullets when Barack Obama was first getting inaugurated. That's how scared everybody was. And what I contend is we got to get beyond just 51% back and forth. Every eight years we just swing in the White House. Every eight years we just swing back and forth. We have to go beyond that. We have to heal. And it's not a question of which is the real America. It's all America. America has always been a house divided. And what I contend, it isn't that we've gone awry, we just haven't done it yet. There was never the vision of a nation that was pluralistic. A nation that was multi-faith. Multiple ethnicities. Real equality. Our infrastructures have never, ever, ever had that. From the first articles of the Constitution that allowed free slaves and slave states and all different kind of ways that people would be represented, it's time to reimagine. Pain pushes until vision pulls. We can't keep talking about what we don't want. It's time to talk about what we do want. You don't get what you pray for, you get what you give your attention to. And too much attention was given to what won. Because all the energy was there. It's time to put forth a bold vision. It's time to have those conversations. Listen to what you, 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 you talk about. What do you put in your Facebook? Can somebody listen to your conversation and tell what you believe and not just what you hate? Can somebody look at your conversation and show where you want to go and not just where you're running from? Now's the time, I'm telling you. It is no joke. This is not a drill. The emergency broadcast system, you know, if this was a real drill, blah, blah. It's a real drill. It ain't no drill. This is it. It is now. But what? a wonderful opportunity we have. What a wonderful opportunity we have. I don't know about you, but I'm excited. I was wondering what was it going to take us to do more than Twitter and tweet. I couldn't figure out what it was that was going to shake us up out of our complacency. And it's here. And it's now. And now is the time to claim the victory to stand in the victory. Now is the time to come together. King was not killed because of the civil rights movement. He was killed when he started speaking out against Vietnam. That's when he was killed. And there was the unfinished business that he was doing, which was uniting the movements. 
He was bringing together the civil rights movement, the student nonviolent movement, the labor movement, the priest and freedom movement. He was bringing all these movements together and there was going to be a sit in in Washington DC until we got out of Vietnam and he had the moral authority to do it. In this great moment, can we stop working in silos? Can we quit doing musical chairs and like bumping off the next one to make sure when the music stops, we're not the one left standing? Can we have a vision that's big enough that says, all of us are gonna get through? So we're not just, oh, let's squeeze the women in. Oh, let's squeeze the gay people in this year. Well, it'll be the Muslims this year. And oh, it's the immigrants over here. No, no, no. All in. All in. All in. The conservatives have already figured it out. There's a reason why they are anti-immigration, anti-abortion, anti-gay, anti-civil rights, anti-all of it, all at the same time. They don't even have to put the different stamp on the fundraising letter. And you listen to progressives and they haven't figured it out. They haven't figured out what immigration has to do with LGBT rights or what that has to do with pro-choice or what that has to do with civil rights. They haven't, we haven't figured it out yet. Listen to what I'm saying. We haven't figured out it's all connected. And when we can figure that out, we will be halfway on our way. I'm having a flashback of MLK when I spoke, MLK Junior Celebration, when I spoke at um, Cabrillo College. And I put a challenge out to the students. I said, figure out the answer to these two questions. If you want to be an activist for the long haul, figure out the answer to these two questions. Why is Barack Obama black? His mother's white. Why is he black? And why, but why? Why? That's the question. Why? Why is he black and why was there a 9-11? And I'm not gonna answer those two for you. But when you figure those out, that will really define a lot of the work that is before us in this great moment. I'd like to share with you a spoken word piece that I don't think it's coincidence whatsoever that I wrote it on the eve of the last inauguration. When Barack Obama was elected the second time, yes, the first time was monumental, but you know, green hyena might've been able to get in office. People were so pissed at what was going on then. But when he won the second time, I knew something was happening. And there were so many things that were going on, the 150th anniversary of the Emancipation Proclamation and 50 years of the march and all these different things. And I was connecting the dots, like I'm asking us to connect. And they connected in this piece. And I asked myself, is it appropriate to do that piece now, given what's happening in this inauguration? And the more I thought about it, I thought it's more important now than it was then because it is the reminder that we need now. It's called Upon the Dawning of This New Day. With eyes purified, 
We see beyond the lies that have denied the divinity of our humanity, giving cause to pause the full granting of our liberty. Upon the dawning of this new day, we can honestly say in all the different ways that we pray, thank you, God, for having brought us from such a mighty long way. The road has not been easy and bittersweet its song, but this rugged journey has made us strong convinced us that we belong standing here together against systems perpetuating the wrong, marveling at the miracle that we are standing together at all. We are part of the dream the king inspired into imagination, standing here together in unification for the diversification of our nation. Full of colors and textures. No more conjectures of cookie cutters that cut out anything that can't fit within its margins. Upon the dawning of this new day, we're opening up to new realities, courageous enough to create the world that we want to see. No more acquiescence. No more waiting for some hero to bring us justice, for it has always been just us. <laughs> the goodness forever in our hands. Yet, we must expand this us to include the ones that we would exclude because they intrude upon the privileges which we heretofore have never had to share. Do I dare care about you enough to let you into my comfort zone, knowing that it shatters the moment that I concede that you matter? What is a comfort zone anyway? But a self-induced sandbox, ready to be transcended. Ascended, it is blended with new awareness and new understanding, new experiences that dissipate the leeriness of the weariness of the burden of carrying around generation of shame and guilt and just plain old ignorance. Mm -mm. Upon the dawning of this new day, we decree another way, a better way. Oh yes, freedom shall reign from every mountainside and freedom shall reign in every barrio and ghetto. From Motown to Chinatown, suburban valleys to skid row alleys, from factories to ivy leagues, from prisons to painted deserts and cities, from sea to shining sea, we will retrieve the promise of our creed that each and every one of us is created equal and endowed by our creator with the inalienable right to pursue happiness, liberty, and life. And pursue we do. Not by chance or preordained selectivity. Not through legislation or internally oppressed anonymity. No, we will live and we will love boldly, loudly, by divine design and our own audacious incline. We will not reject our fierce future rolling on rewind. Mm -mm. We will build bridges over gullies of greed, bulldoze down the roadblocks of poverty. The frigidity of apathy melts into hot springs of hope. Frozen access thaws into clear open paths that greet downtrodden feet where no belly ever be empty in the land full of fruited plains. Where our children have the freedom to grow and to know that they are safe and provided for, and that any door they have the hot spot to knock on 
will open unto them because of the purity, the intensity of their own authenticity. We won't wait one more minute for the Senate or the Congress to get us out of this mess. For we possess the strength and the drive to revive our deepest intent, which we will no longer sell to the highest bidder to rent. Each of us is a winner. Inheritors of riches of the soul, endowments untold as we unfold into this new dawning. No longer longing, but finally living out the seed of our creed. Liberty and justice for all. Finally finding a little bit of fertile ground. Liberty and justice for all. A little bit of fertile ground beyond lofty ideas and noble sounds. For all a solid rock, not a single island like an Ellis upon which some were permitted to dock. I'm talking about a new foundation upon which we all can stand as brothers and sisters of this nation who collectively demand that together we rise, catching all who fall, letting none slip through clasped fingers, no matter how small. All upon the dawning of this new day, May we drive away the divisiveness of the otherness that blinds us to our togetherness as we bear witness to this collective change of heart. Not as voyeurs of history in the making, but as architects of our destiny here for the taking. By the mother of pure light within the soul of our souls. May the wholeness of this new boldness transform the essence of the U.S. presence wherever it is that we go, so that none need fear that we are near. And all over the planet, the only thing left behind by a U.S. M US footprint is an imprint of empowerment. Let the heavens, oh, let the heavens rejoice this day when we, by the determination of our spirit, redeem our checkered past. And from this day forward, set forth a new legacy, a legacy of compassion as well as prosperity, the austerity to begin again with a new lens, which, like the arc of the moral universe, bends towards justice. Upon the dawning of this new day, may it be said that we did not shirk our responsibility to make possibility a reality. When the history books are read, let it be said that we, a multiply colored people, have the audacity to start a new kind of revolution where the solution was not one up over one down, but a resounding, yes, we can. 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 Si se puede. 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 Oh, yes, we can. Yes, we will. Yes, we must. Yes, we are. Yes, it is now. As we move out of longing, move out.
from the dawning and step onto this brand new day. Now my stay. Keep hope alive.